Welcome to module one of our class in corporate finance. And this is the very first problem, problem 11A. You can click the link in the description to download a copy of this workbook for yourself. This problem has us looking at operating cash flows. Now, I want to explain why we're going to look at operating cash flows. If you just want to solve the problem, probably skip ahead four or five minutes. We'll work through the problem. It's, it's a very quick problem. But I, I feel like at the very start of the class, we should explain like, why, why are we doing this? So I want to discuss just the concept of cash flow and why it's so important in finance. And that'll sort of set the table for the rest of this chapter. So if you take a finance course, you're going to find your instructor very obsessed with cash flows. Just about every problem we look at in a finance course in some form or another is going to discuss the cash flows of an investment or of a company or something like this. Uh, and it's a really important concept in finance. And the idea is that to value a company, to value an asset, to value an investment, value its cash flows. Now, I come at this from the perspective of an accountant. I'm an accountant. I'm a CPA. I'm not a CFA. So I do want to let you know that I am not a finance professional. I'm an accounting professional, an accounting educator. I'm making these videos uh, because students have requested that I make them. And so I've had to work closely with uh, a friend and colleague who, who helped me develop the material. Uh, but he's the expert, not me in any of it. Um, in finance, cash flow is a crucial concept because it's very real. In accounting, a lot of things are based on estimates and projections. Oh, how many debts do I think are going to go bad next year? Or how many years do I think I'm going to use this building? They're all guesses. And finance folks say, well, the, the realest thing you can have is money, right? The company generates money. They pay it to you, the shareholder, as a dividend. That's real. And that's something of value. That's what we want to base all of our work around is the cash flow that the company is generating, not some accountants estimates that are ingrained in the profits. So, uh, what our first chapter has us doing in this course is just going from those accounting numbers, which are definitely useful in accounting to cash flow numbers, which are much more useful in finance. So you'll find in most finance classes, you'll be doing calculations like this early on, taking accounting income statements and balance sheets and moving them over into cash flow information, not cash flow statements. That's another accounting uh, financial statement, but cash flow information, converting accounting information into finance information. So um, a few more concepts and then we'll jump into the problem. Uh, the first thing is just this concept of, okay, a company uses its assets to generate money, right? It uses its assets to generate money. And what can it do with the excess money it generates? Well, it can use it to buy more assets and to sort of satisfy its own assets. So it can use it all on the left side of the equation. But if it has extra money, it will often pay money out to creditors or pay money out to shareholders or likely both. Well, from finance perspective, we're often playing the role of creditor or stockholder, right? We buy bonds in a company that's, that's we're creditors or we can buy stocks in a company, then we're investors. So we're very interested in how good the company is at using its assets to generate cash flow because that's money that's going to come to us potentially. So we're very interested in the cash flow of the company because you know, it's, it's important to us as investors or potential investors or lenders or potential lenders. So how do I figure out the cash flow from assets? Well, this can get further broken down. And this is question one of our class has us looking at operating cash flow. We'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, question two, we'll look at capital spending. Three, change in networking capital. And question, and these are 1-1, 1-2, 1-3. Question 1-4 has us looking at all three of them. So let's focus in on operating cash flow. This is the cash flow the company generates from its day-to-day -day business. So Walmart sells stuff to us. That's their cash flow, uh, you know, from their day-to-day -day business. They pay their employees money. Maybe they pay, buy goods from their suppliers and they sell stuff to us, right? Those are the operating cash flows, the main operating cash flows of a big retailer like Walmart or Home Depot. So operating cash flow is just the company basically doing what it does 
to make money. Capital spending is them buying capital assets, like buying a new store or buying a new equipment to go in the store. And obviously that's one way they could use uh, their cash flows. And lastly, change in networking capital is a little more technical, but it's uh, basically the the short-term assets and short-term liabilities current assets and current liabilities how much money they have flowing in and out of those accounts Uh, but this video is focused on or this problem one one is focused on operating cash flow so with the preamble out of the way let's get down to business so we're using we're figuring out how much money the company's day-to-day business is generated generating and the starting point here is an accounting income statement so let's read the question and see how we do stranger company has sales revenues of thirty thousand dollars the operating expenses are 21 including depreciation of three the company has interest of a thousand dollars and the tax rate is 25 percent what's the operating cash flow okay to figure this out basically they've given us an accounting income statement let's prepare that income statement so we have sales of thirty thousand dollars and the income statement is the summary of revenues and expenses and take your revenues your amount your company earned minus your expenses your costs and that tells you how profitable the company was so let's figure out the accounting profits of this company sales are 30k Operating expense, what did it say? 21,000, but it says including depreciation of three. I want to split out the depreciation. It's going to become relevant later. So our operating expenses excluding depreciation, 21 minus three are 18,000. Our depreciation expense, I'm being very shorthanded here because we're just asked to calculate something, calculate operating cash flow. We're not ex- asked to prepare in good form an income statement or something like that. If they had asked me for good format, I would, you know, spend more time on dollar signs and underlines and things like this. But in any event, sales minus operating expenses minus depreciation is 30 minus 18 minus 3, 30 minus 21. That's $9,000. And that is our um, EBIT. Now, EBIT stands for earnings before interest in tax. In accounting, I, in accounting class, I would call this operating income. But in a finance class, we're going to call it EBIT. But we're essentially referring to the same thing. There's maybe some small differences here or there. But for all intents and purposes, we're talking about the same thing. Uh, so earnings before interest in tax. Well, then let's take away interest, which was 1000 to get us down to 8 which is our earnings before tax. Take away the I, because we we did take away the interest. And that brings us down to our taxes. Our taxes were 25%. 25% of 8,000 I can do in my head. It's 2,000, a quarter of eight is two. And that brings us to our bottom line, our net income, our earnings, our profits. This company made $6,000. $6,000. Okay, so there we have a beautiful sort of uh, income statement, but we haven't answered the question. What are the operating cash flows? There are so many ways a person could calculate this. I'm going to show you the one that I've seen most commonly in finance textbooks, and it says start with EBIT and work from there. So that's what we'll do. We'll start from EBIT and we'll work from there. Um. So if I have my EBIT, which was $9,000, now I need to look above EBIT and below EBIT. I'm going to look above EBIT and I'm going to say, is is there anything up there that should have been excluded? Well, sales, typically that involves cash flow. Most of my operating expenses involve cash flow because, you know, so again, think of Walmart. They sell stuff to you while they get money from you when you buy a bag full of stuff operating expenses they pay their employees they pay them with money so that involves cash flow the one that sticks out though is depreciation there's no cash flow with depreciation depreciation is called a non-cash expense so it's a special expense and we're going to deal with depreciation throughout the course so it's just worth knowing okay depreciation never involves cash so EBIT isn't cash flow because it includes depreciation so we want to know cash right so let's Take that depreciation out of our EBIT. Now, how, how do I take it out? Well, I went 30 minus 18 uh, minus 3 is 9. Well, let's pretend I didn't have that. It would be 30 minus 18. It should be 12. So this should be 12. So I'm going to actually have to add back depreciation. 
So I add depreciation of 3000. So now my subtotal is 12, right? So it's, again, there's many different ways we could calculate this. This is one of them. Um, okay, let's look below the line. We've got two more expenses. We got interest because it's earning before interest and tax. We got interest and tax. Interest can involve cash, but it's not considered an operating cash flow. It's not considered part of the day-to-day -day business of the company. Uh, and it's, it's a payment out to creditors, right? So it's something different. It's a different kind of cash flow. Taxes, though, are operating cash flows. This $2,000 in taxes is a $2,000 deduction from our cash. So minus 2,000 equals 9 plus 3 is 12, minus 2 is 10. That is my operating cash flow, which we will abbreviate in this course as OCF. So the formula is EBIT plus depreciation minus taxes. Now, later in the course, we will go through so many different ways to calculate this. You can really calculate OCF in myriad different ways, but it becomes a really useful and powerful number. Right now, okay, you know, we're just like, we're calculating it going through like an intellectual exercise. Later in the class, we will use this number to do powerful things. So I hope you'll stick with me because I want to do powerful things together. And just, uh, you know, if you're planning to stick with me, I hope you'll hit one of those buttons. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.